quick thinking 911 callers can mean the difference between life and death. What about afterwards? There is no afterwards. He's dead. He's out in the mountain. He killed us. He shot us in the mountain. We can't see anything. Everything is bright. I'm only 11. Here are some of my favorites. In January of 2008, a 911 dispatch center in Detroit, Michigan received a terrifying call from a cell phone somewhere in the city. In an unconventional case of pocket dialing, the dispatcher began to hear something unnerving coming from the other end of the line. The police started using high technology to triangulate the vehicle's location from the cell phone tower. Emergency 911, where is the problem? East Point 911, hello? <laughs> oh, I have that 911 call again. Bonnie, see, latitude's changed now. I can hear her crying in the background. We're checking anything suspicious around these houses, anything in the street. <laughs> I'm not trying to sneak out. She just said I'm not trying to sneak out. <laughs> and she's crying. I know I did it. Don't punch me, please. Don't punch me, please. I know I did it. I know I did it. I'm so I just lost the call. Last thing she said was, uh, please don't punch me. I know I did it. I've got new coordinates. Oh. He's hurting her right now. they got to be stationary right now because I'm listening to him rape her. Oh. How about turning on the hazard light? Pulling oh, up on one flash and not Ed Moore. That's right. Oh, I'm not the in a desperate call for help came in, but the victim couldn't tell the emergency dispatch what was happening. When the dispatcher answered the line, there was no one there. Luckily, he could hear that the caller was in trouble at the other end. One of the kidnapped women managed to secretly dial for help without catching the suspect's attention. She kept her cell phone hidden in a pocket to hide that she had attempted to contact emergency services. The victim dropped subtle clues to the dispatcher about what was happening by having a conversation with the suspect. In a race to help the women, the dispatcher who received the call was able to make a note of the longitude and latitude that the call was being received from before passing the information along to their lieutenant. The woman lost her cell phone signal but tried calling for help again. Their 911 call was sent to Detroit Police Dispatch. The dispatcher was able to trace the call, and it showed it was coming from Pinewood Street, near Hoyt, in the city of Detroit. He worked frantically to relay as many details as was possible to nearby units, listening intently for anything that could end up saving the abducted women. Detroit and East Point dispatchers navigated their crews around the streets. All the officers in the field had vicinity and a description of the suspect's car. Minutes later, the final and most disturbing 911 call came in. Not only did these quick-thinking women secretly dial for emergency services, but one of them also managed to switch on the car's hazard lights. Police officers arrived at the scene and took the suspected attacker, a man by the name of Derek Smith, immediately into custody. There was a brief scuffle as the kidnapper was put into cuffs. According to police records, Smith had apparently only just gotten out of prison just a few months before, after serving a prison sentence for sexual assault. The kidnapped and attacked women are sisters who met the suspect at a nightclub. The attacker has remained in prison and could be released anywhere from 2036 to 2085. In April 2014, Ronald Karras called 911 after being hit with a brick, stuffed in a trunk of a vehicle, and kidnapped. 911. Yes, hi. Uh, I'm in the back of a trunk. My license number is... YTG or TT? Yeah. Which one? YTG. Okay, what do you mean? YTG. The trunk? Um, they threw me in the back of the trunk. Who? Uh, 
um, it's um, Deb, um, Jordan, and then another guy. I'm where, not sure. Where are you at? Is. Where were you when they put you in I the trunk? I don't trunk? know. Where were I'm you when they put you in the trunk? Around 6th Avenue. We're at on 6th Avenue. Um, I'm not real sure. I need some kind of location so I can start officers in that area. Oh, well, it's got to be somewhere in the 6th uh, Avenue area. In the 6th Avenue area? Yeah. It's a black impala. A black impala? A black impala. They're out here. I can't talk right now. Sir? Who did this to you? Barb. Barb who? No, I'm sorry. Deb Jordan? Yes. Okay. We're, we're stopped right now. Can you... Is there a lever? Listen, listen. In most trunks, yeah, in your car, I there's know a there lever. Is. There is. There is. Okay, can you pull that lever? But they're in the car. Is the car stopped? I would pull that lever and take off running. I can't get away. Why not? They're right here. They're right here. Did, how long were you in the car? I have officers. I have officers started for the area, okay. but I don't know. I can't say for sure that's where you're at. It's a black impala. What? A black impala. I got that. Is your name Ronald? No. Yes. Okay. Who's Deb Jordan to you? Who is she to you? What? Who is Deb to you? told the 911 dispatcher he didn't know where he was being taken. Police officers were able to trace his phone to Prospect Park in Des Moines. When officers arrived, they found a car with a shattered window and Karras in a nearby wooded area. The 60-year-old was found unresponsive and bleeding from his head. According to police reports, he had been beaten with a brick. Karras was immediately rushed to Mercy Medical Center. Des Moines Police Detective Danny White said the 911 call was disturbing. The whole thing is just disturbing. It doesn't matter how many times you listen to it, I've listened to it. 
probably a hundred times and it gets me every time I listen to it. The detective was relieved they arrived on time to save Karis. I think had we not gotten there when we did, then he, he definitely would have probably perished in the, in the woods. Deborah Oliver and co-conspirator John Deering were arrested and charged with first degree kidnapping. The pair kidnapped Karis because they believed he had money on his person. Oliver was sentenced after a jury convicted her of first-degree kidnapping, attempted murder, and willful injury in October. Following a bench trial, the district court found Deering guilty of kidnapping in the first degree, attempt to commit murder, and willful injury. Karis suffered severe brain damage. The victim's stepdaughter, Jackie Martin, testified that he needed 24-hour care. For a while, he had a hard time recognizing family members. Martin looked directly at Oliver during her sentencing telling her that the beating left Karis unable to attend his step-grandson's football games or have conversations. Sadly, Ronald Karis died a year later from the complications of the brutal attack. When faced with situations while out in public where there are signs of obvious child abuse, the ways in which humans react can be varied. Some choose to move on with their lives not wanting to place themselves in the middle of another family's business. Others feel they have no other alternative but to act. Those in the latter category will sometimes have to come up with creative workarounds in order to make the situation right. Fate placed Orlando, Florida waitress Flavane Carvalho in this exact position on New Year's Day 2021. Flavane was not scheduled to work at the small restaurant where she was employed that day but by chance, another employee had called in sick. The whole of the day had been very busy and proceeded without incident. But by the end of the day, the Mrs. Potato restaurant was only partially filled. One of the tables still in use was occupied by a family of four, two adults and two children, an 11-year-old boy and a four-year-old girl. Flavane, who was not assigned to the table, noticed a number of off-putting occurrences while taking the family's order. Previous to the waitress's first approach to the table, she did notice a scratch on the boy's face. When she came over to see if they needed anything else, she noticed multiple visible bruises on the boy, including on his face. Flavane also took note of the fact that the 11-year-old was also the only one at the table who did not receive a food order. The adult male, later identified as the child's stepfather, stated that the boy would eat when they arrived at home. Being a mother herself and recognizing the multiple red flags of child abuse, the heroic waitress immediately did her due diligence to make sure the boy was okay. She hastily created a small sign to silently ask if he was okay and if he needed help, and placed it in a manner that he could only see. When he was able to confirm Flavane's suspicions that he was being abused, she discreetly dialed 911. Orlando Police 911, this is Sahad on the recorded line. What's the address of your emergency? It's 4550 so, uh, South Kirkman Road. 4550 South Kirkman Road? Yes. All right, do you need the police or the paramedics there? Um, I don't know. I need you. I, I don't know what to do. We, I'm a manager of a restaurant, okay. and we have some customers here with two kids. One of the kids is with a lot of bruises on his arms and on his uh, face. Okay. And the parent is not done, uh, giving food for him, but is giving to the another kid that are with them. And uh, the one is so quiet, and I ask him on a paper if he needs help. Uh -huh. And first, he uh, turned his head saying that no, but he keep looking at me and I write in another page if he needs help again. And he uh, make me a sign that yes, he needs help. So I don't know what to do. Okay, so are they at the restaurant right now? Yes. Okay, what's the name of the place? It's Mrs. Potato Restaurant. Mrs. Potato Restaurant? Mrs. Potato, uh-huh. All right, and uh, uh, the family that's there, is, is it, uh, uh, how old is the child, first of all? How old does he look to um, you? About eight years old. It's a couple with two kids. 
a little girl and the boy. The boy is the one that a parent uh, is in trouble. I'm super concerned and I don't know what to do. Can you give me some advice what I what I can do? Uh, well, I can send the police over there. You're just gonna. Only thing is they have to be there. The police has to be able to see them when they get there, so they can talk to the child. That's the only thing okay. we can say. What's your name? Oh, my name is Flavioni. Flavioni. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what's a good phone number to reach you? Um, four zero seven. Qual que é o telefone daqui? Dois, nove, zero. Just a second. Four zero seven. Just a second. I need to confirm. I'm so nervous right now. Okay. Okay. They are about to leave in about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, hold on. Mas o povo já está fechado. Não, mas aqui fora. Não. Localiza quem está perto. Ok. All right, Fabioni, I'm going to go ahead and send the police over to you. Um, we're asking everybody that's meeting with the officers if you've had the flu, any flu-like symptoms or had contact with somebody that has recently? No, no, no. Okay. Also, how many people did you say were there in total again? I'm sorry? Uh, it's a family of four. Two kids and two adults. One family kid of four, about... so two kids and two adults? Yes. Okay. And the other kids are being treated fairly from what it looks like? I'm sorry? The other kids look like they're being treated fairly? No, just the boy is uh, with bruises and he's not eating. The others uh, are eating. And we, when we uh, get their orders, uh -huh. uh, we ask what the boy is going to eat. And the uh -huh. father, uh, the man said, no, he's not going to eat anything. He's going to have his uh, dinner at home. And the tree is eating, and the boy is uh, separate from them, and they are, they give anything to him. Okay. All okay. right. Well, just keep an eye on them. Of course, you can't stop them from leaving or anything, but uh, I will let the you know the police will come out there as soon as possible. Just call us back if anything changes before they leave. Uh, just to confirm, also, do you see any weapons on anybody? No. I okay. Did you ever did you ever see him being assaulted in any way or anything like that, or no? No. Okay, got it. All right, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. When police arrived, they questioned the boy and the adults separately. The 11-year-old was able to describe the mistreatment he was receiving from his stepfather, the adult male at the table, who was identified as 34-year-old Timothy Wilson II. The shocking declarations included beatings with brooms, being punched while hung upside down, and being handcuffed to his bed. Both Wilson and his wife Kristen Swan were arrested on site. For his part, Timothy Wilson II has been charged with multiple counts of child abuse. As this is a new case, no trial has taken place as of the date of this video. As it turns out, this was not new behavior for Wilson. After the arrest, police spoke with his previous wife, Amanda Powell, who described their relationship as volatile. Based on her claims, Powell ended their marriage after just one year due to physical abuse that he allegedly committed against her sons, both from a previous relationship. It's been reported that Wilson was possibly abusive towards his ex-wife as well. As the information stands currently, the four-year-old girl also with the family inside the restaurant did not show signs of abuse and had not confessed to having been a victim. This is believed to be due to the fact that she is the biological daughter of Timothy Wilson II, as his history of malevolence has been supposedly directed only at his line of stepchildren. The biological father of the 11-year-old survivor, Keith Lewis, was split from Kristen Swan before their son was born. He has stated that he was not allowed to be in his son's life for six years due to the tumultuous relationship between the two adults. Keith Lewis is now seeking full custody of his son, a case that is also in the process of being resolved.
In November 2011, a Colorado Springs woman hid in a closet when two men approached the house and tried to burglarize it. Colorado Springs, 911, this is Lori. What is the address of your emergency? Two men have just crossed my fence. They're trying to get in my house. Can you repeat that address for me? Is it an apartment or a house? House. Corner of the Corner. What's the phone number you're calling from? They're trying to break name, please. They're trying to break the window. And your first name? They're coming in my house. Maggie. I understand. What's your first name? Maggie, you said? Males, M E D. Okay. There's two males, you said? Yes. One in the red jump suit, the other with the blue and white hoodie. And the one in the red jumpsuit, is he white, black, or Hispanic? Hello? Yes. They just broke, they just broke the class. Okay. The, the one in the red jumpsuit, is he white, black, or Hispanic? Black or Hispanic. In a red jumpsuit, okay. Okay. They're on their way. And the second one, was he white, black, or Hispanic? And Meg, we do have people, officers en route to your location, okay? You said they're now inside the house? We have officers on the way. I'm going to ask you a few quick questions. Can the best that you can for me, okay? Are there any weapons involved or mentioned? Okay. That's fine. And do you have any further descriptions on them, Meg, from what you could tell? And are you or yourself in immediate danger? Are you able to get yourself to safety? Yes. Can you get yourself to safety? I'm in a closet. Okay. I'm going to stay on the phone with you, okay? Um, if you want, if you don't want to talk anymore, if you don't want them to hear me, I'm going to ask you some questions and just, you know, um, maybe tap on the phone once for yes and two for no, okay? Is there anybody else in the house with you, Meg? No. Is in, okay, is anybody injured? They run, they run. They ran? Oh, there's a cop. They, they... Is the policeman with you? They're running out the back pasture. They're running towards Falcon. The cops got them. The cops got them. They're running to the apartment complex across the street. The cops following them. The red suit guys run away from the cops, heading towards down um an academy. The cops run after the guy into the apartment complex. The red suit guy is still running past the apartment. Okay. Went into the apartment, uh, summon apartment. Okay, are you okay? I am. The woman was fortunate, however, as the suspects fled as soon as they discovered her. A month later, a 17-year-old in Orange County found herself in a similar position. 911, what is your emergency? Okay, I called before, and I already, they came back. I, I, I think I'm an American guy. I don't know what you're talking about, ma'am. What address is this at? Okay. They broke my, my back. I'm sorry. I'm okay, door. you have to calm down, please. I don't understand what you're saying. What happened? Okay. Someone is trying to enter my house. They already did. Someone did what? They're entering my house right now. They're two. There's two guys trying to break American into guys. your house? Yes. They're two really young African American guys. They're 17. Or like 17, between 17 and 24 years old. And how are they trying to get in? They broke my back landing door. Bro broke the back slider? Landing doors in the back, in the patio. They broke the back door open? Yeah. Yeah. How old are you? Oh, my God. 17. Please hurry up. Any weapons? Do you see any weapons? Are you hiding? Yes, I'm in my closet. You're where? In my closet. Please hurry up. Do you have any weapons? No. Are they still inside? Yes, they're like roving. I don't care if they're doing it. I'm sorry. They're what? They're stealing. I think they're confusing. 
Stay on the line. Let me have the dispatcher. Do not hang up. Stay on the line. I'm here. Okay. Do you know what they were wearing? Are you trying to be quiet or something? What? Do you know what they were wearing? I, I, okay. Okay. I didn't see the other one. One of them is wearing a white, a, a black t-shirt. A white or a black t-shirt? Black t-shirt. Do you know them? No. Have you ever seen them before? Never anymore. Okay. Okay. My room. Shh. Okay. They're trying to come in my room. Okay. Shh. Be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. Don't kill me. Oh, they left. They left on foot? What kind of car are they in? Do you see? Are they gone? No, they're in the in my driveway. Okay. What kind of car are they in? It's what? a Toyota. Harry. What color? What? Oh are they... Are they backing out? Are they leaving? Yeah, they left. Two burglars entered a Florida home while the teen hid in an upstairs closet and dialed 911. The burglars left and later crashed when they ran through a red light. In February 2017, Alex Deaton jumped out of bushes near the La Luz trailhead and forced a man and woman into the trunk of their car. The couple was able to escape using the trunk's emergency release. But when they emerged, Deaton shot the man and took off with the woman. A panicked 19-year-old called 911 to report the incident, a call that ended a multi-state murder spree. Please, I, I need your help right away. It's uh, at the Law Luz entrance to the Wantable Picnic Ground. A man just shot me, and I think he killed my girlfriend. He killed her car up with bodies. He are, are, are you shot right, right now? Okay, can I ask if we just drive down to the gas station so 
more public. I don't want to get you hurt, sir. Can we do that? She's dead. He's out in the mountain. He killed us. He, he saw us in the mountains. In the mountains. I, 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 I stole the car from him when he was chasing us. Cause he shot me and I fell down and then he, he, he chased Sarah more. Sarah got away a little bit, but I'm pretty sure he killed her. Can we drive out of here, sir? No. You got it, sir. Thank you. We're going to drive down to the gas station because I don't know if he's going to come back down and shoot us. The one on the tribal grounds, the one uh, across from San Diego's uh, casino. I, I don't want him to be here. I'm just going to leave the car at the base of the hill here on. Hill here. The unknown male victim and his girlfriend were kidnapped near La Luz Trailhead and thrown into the boot of their truck. The couple tried to escape, but Deaton shot the male in the backside and drove off with the female victim. Authorities never revealed their identities due to the nature of the crime. 28-year-old Alex Deaton was the target of a multi-state search that began several days before the incident in New Mexico. Deaton had been accused of killing his girlfriend, Heather Robinson, by allegedly strangling her to death in Brandon, Mississippi on February 26, 2017. He fled to Dixon, where police say he shot and killed 69-year-old Brenda Pinter. The elderly victim was cleaning up inside the Dixon Baptist Church when Deaton entered and shot her. Her cause of death was multiple gunshot wounds. From the church shooting, the killer went back to Brandon where he shot a female jogger. Then, on February 28th, police linked him to the abduction in New Mexico and then further traced him to a store in Kansas. Store clerk Riley Jewell handed the keys to his vehicle over, then Deaton shot him at point-blank range and fled. Finally, the shooter was arrested outside of Wilson, Kansas after a fiery crash. It was only discovered later that Deaton had left the body of Heather Robinson after killing her, but had allegedly taken her phone and pretended to be her until she was found dead. The Deaton family expressed condolences to the victims and their families, saying, Our family is deeply shocked, saddened, and horrified at all that has unfolded since last Wednesday. We are devastated and completely heartbroken for all that has happened. Our family is in a state of disbelief. We don't understand why or how this could ever happen and are just thankful it has now come to an end. Although the family said they were shocked, investigations revealed Deaton texted his mother and had a short phone call on the 27th of February in the middle of the multi-day spree. He sent jumbled, unintelligible messages and also incriminating messages. Police believed he might have purposefully done this to appear less sane than he was. Before the multiple murders, Deaton appeared to be a loving father and family man. His Facebook page had numerous posts of his children. However, he did also talk about his love for weapons. Deaton worked as a sales associate at an AT&T store. In August 2018, Alex Deaton emotionally pleaded guilty to murder. The killer has never revealed a motive to authorities. However, he told the judge he was on drugs at the time of the shooting and had earlier testified he has bipolar disorder. Police say he had no prior criminal history, and Deputy DA Marty Miller stated that he thought something in Alex Deaton had snapped, and he liked hurting people. On the day of the sentencing, the father of Heather Robinson left him with these words. I'd like to see him treated the way he treated my daughter. When it's said and done, before I leave this earth, I hope he gets what comes to him. Deaton was sentenced to life in prison. Meanwhile, the 19-year-old store clerk who made the call has recovered from the shooting. Riley Jewell said he was lucky to be alive. His family and community hailed him as a hero for putting the ruthless crime spree to an end. He thanked the first responders, saying without them, he wouldn't have made it out of the robbery alive. In a Facebook picture posted by the former store clerk on October 2020, he holds his newborn baby. In January 2019, a hypoglycemic episode could have killed his grandfather, but a heroic nine-year-old Kazin Chrisman of Massachusetts saved his life. The little boy and his 80-year-old grandfather, Alan Chrisman, were about to go out for pizza together when Kazin noticed that Alan had been acting strange. He was reportedly waiting in the back seat, but his grandfather was not moving, nor was he responding to him, so he called 911. 911, the sounds recorded. Where is your emergency? 
Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi, this is 911. Um, yes, my grandpa has a, is acting very strange. He's acting and, very strange? And he's in the car and he's banging on the pedals. He's getting really angry. All right, where are you? Um, eight, four, eight, 85 Forsyth? Yes, 85 Forsyth. 85 Forsyth? Yes. Right. And Somerset? Yep. Now, where are you right now? I'm in the driveway. You're in the driveway? In the car. You're in the car with him? Yes. <laughs> so what I want you to do is, can you get out of the car? Uh, sure. All right, now is there anyone else there? Uh, no. There's no one else there, just you and your grandfather? Yes. All right, can you... Uh, do, you mind? do you mind if I ask one more question? Yep. Uh, Papa? Are you all right? Papa? Yeah, he's not answering me. He's not answering you? No, he's just really mad. Okay, can you get back into the house at all? Uh, or does yes. he have the keys? No, I'm able to. The garage door is open. Okay. okay. So I want you to go back in the house for me, okay? Okay. All right. Now, what's your name? My name is Kazen. Kazen? K-A-V-I-N, Kazen. Okay. And what's your last name? Chrisman. C-R-I-S-M-A-N. And do you know what this phone number is? No, but I do know my dad's and my mom's. All right, and have you tried calling either of them? No. All right. <laughs> so what's he doing? So he's like really angry. He's making like <laughs> sounds. All right, I want you to stay on the line with me, okay? Yeah. How old are you? I'm nine. You're nine? <laughs> yeah. Hold on for a minute. Michael, what is wrong? Put the call. Are you okay? What? Nope. Not. I'm trying to put the call in, okay? Yes. Yeah. I need you to make your way to 85 Forsyth Avenue. 85 Forsyth Avenue. I've got a nine-year-old caller on the phone saying his grandfather is acting strange. He's becoming enraged, but he's in the car right now. Not Hello? Yet. Not now. Hello. All right, I have the police on the way, okay? Yes. All right, now is the car on? No, no. It's off. It's off? Okay. Yeah. I just don't know what's happening no, right now. Okay, he might be having a medical issue right now. Yeah. I don't know, he's a diabetic, too. All right, so you know he has diabetes? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if he's high or low right now. Okay. That was a fire. <laughs> What was that? Are you all right? What? What was that noise? Was that your grandpa? That, yeah. All right, and he's not really responding to you, is he? No, he's not even saying a word. He's not saying a word, he's just making noises? Yes. All right, do you know how old he is? Uh, I think 80. All right, so you think he's 80 years old? Yes, but he's really healthy, though. Okay. He doesn't look 80 at all. All right, he might be having a medical issue right now, okay? Yeah. I mean, I watch uh, Night Watch, Night Watch Nation. Okay. You know what that is? I do. Yeah, so I don't know if it's like cardiac or anything. Yep, so uh, I have an ambulance on the way as well. Okay. All right, now where were you guys going? Uh, Morafas. <laughs> You're going to Morafas for dinner? Yes. All right. Now, do you know if anything like this has ever happened with him before? No, he says... Uh, 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 he, he's, had, he's had a few, um, accidents before. Once falling off the bed and the, uh, oh. fire department came. Mm -hmm. And another and another one was at my house, and then this would be right, and this would be a third one right now. Hey Steve, it's gonna be for an eight-year-old man. You're gonna be staging.
All right, they're on the way right now, okay? Yes. The child did mention that their grandfather was diabetic. She still is. Yep, I told them that. Okay. Receive your time is 17.28. Do you see the police officer there? Yes. I'll All, right. Here, okay? All right, go talk to them, okay? Okay. All right, good job. Chrisman was suffering from a hypoglycemic episode and had his grandson delayed calling for help, he may have died without emergency treatment. After the ordeal, authorities brought the two a pizza to celebrate. Kazan gave credit to his school for teaching him how to react in an emergency and stated in an interview that he was very proud of himself and happy his grandfather is still alive. Just before 11 a.m. on February 22, 2014, maintenance man Gerald Gardner arrived at the home of Samira and podiatrist Adam Frash in Tallahassee, Florida. The Frashes lived in a lavish mansion and had been married five years, but their relationship had had many up and downs. The maintenance man had his 14-year-old son with him, and together they walked to the back of the house. Strangely, the owner's Bashan Frise dog was running around by the pool. Then Gerald realized why. Samira Frash was in the pool, and it was clear that she was dead. Her body had sunk to the bottom of the deep end, and her leopard print robe was floating open, showing that she was naked underneath. At 11.02 a.m., Gerald contacted 911. 911, what's that? Ma'am, can I get an officer out here to go to the needle at 83 Center Point, Vanessa Drive? There's a lady laying in the pool, in her backyard, in her pool. She's dead. Okay. first responders arrived, a firefighter pulled the woman's body from the water. The maintenance man was sure she was dead and hadn't moved her himself in fear of contaminating the scene with his DNA. Her fingertips didn't look like she had been in the water that long. EMS administered CPR for 45 minutes, but it was too late. The 38-year-old was pronounced dead at the scene. Frash's sandals were floating in the shallow end, and one was caught on the pool ladder. A large bruise on the right side of her forehead could have been caused by an accidental fall or something more sinister. The man who discovered her body was sure it had been no accident, telling police, he killed her, he did it. The autopsy revealed that 38-year-old Samira died from drowning and blunt force trauma to the head, which had left a skull fracture. The medical examiner ruled the death a homicide, but couldn't give an exact time of death. They believed the deceased injuries were caused by a trip and fall or a single blow with a fist. The medical examiner thought that Samira had been alive when she entered the pool but wasn't conscious due to her head injuries and drowned. The maintenance man was quickly cleared as a suspect and police traced his number one suspect, the victim's husband, to his Panama City Beach home. When they delivered the news of his wife's sudden death, the podiatrist said he already knew. A friend had called and given him the news earlier, but didn't know how his wife had died, heard one of the children ask why their daddy was crying. When police caught up with Frash in person, 
they questioned a recent looking scratch under his eye. He explained it had been one of the children. He spoke to the police as if he didn't know his wife had ended up dead in the pool and suggested that she might have tripped while chasing their dog Bella. The police heard how Frash had recently separated from Samira, his third wife, but that he was with her the night before she died and that she had drunk two bottles of champagne that night. After spending the day together and getting on well, the atmosphere changed later in the night when the victim discovered her husband was involved with yet another woman. Emotions flew and the couple fought before. According to the unfaithful foot doctor, they both went to sleep. He didn't plan on spending the night there and left in the morning with the girls as they planned before going to bed, and that Samira was sleeping when he left. Their marriage had been far from idyllic. The doctor had met Samira in Paris. She was a fashion model, and he was in the process of separating from his second wife. When his divorce was finalized, they married in Vegas and had a second ceremony in Madagascar. When the third Mrs. Frash moved to start her new married life in Florida, she was stunned to discover that her new husband had a child. The couple got over this and had two children together. The relationship was full of affairs, accusations, and arguments. In 2013, Samira was arrested for domestic assault and trying to run her partner off the road. The charges against her were dropped. A month later, Samira filed for divorce, and in December 2013, she was granted sole temporary custody of their children. According to her friends, neighbors, and assistant, the ex-model was afraid that her husband would act on his threats to kill her. The police weren't buying his story, but they didn't have the evidence they needed to prove he murdered his third wife. With his money and resources, it wouldn't have been difficult for Frash to flee the country, so the police wanted him behind bars. After first being arrested and released on child custody charges, Frash was re-arrested for illegally possessing weapons while on bond. While he was in prison for that, the murder case against him grew. From Leon County Jail, Frash wrote an open letter to the people of Tallahassee. In the letter, he claimed he was being held under a false pretext and was being put through a nightmare. He said no one should have to endure that from the American justice system. He spoke of the horrors of jail and posed two questions to the court. What evidence they had that places him at the pool at the time of his wife's death and her specific time of death. He said that he knew from his medical training that the time of death could be very time specific. Toxicology reports showed that Samira had no alcohol in her system and it seemed that she would get sole possession of the house if they divorced. This, the prosecution argued, was a motive for wanting her dead. Almost three years after Samira died, the widower was charged with first-degree murder and he was finally brought to trial. At trial, the prosecution argued that the accused had hit his wife in the head with a golf club and threw her into the pool in an attempt to remove the incriminating DNA. He then staged the scene and left. The victim's DNA was found on a golf club at the home, and a witness testified that Frash had asked him to make his golf clubs disappear. They also called on testimony from the defendant's cellmate, who claimed Frash confessed that he hit Samira with a golf club. The defense argued that the case was entirely circumstantial and that it was possible someone else killed Samira. Then, they pointed to testimony from the medical examiner, who didn't believe that the victim was hit with a golf club, and from a neighbor, who thought he saw Mrs. Frash alive after her husband had left the property. However, the jury took less than two hours to decide the defendant's fate and found him guilty of first-degree murder. For Frash, the man who used to have it all, there would be no more million-dollar mansions and fast cars. In January 2017, the judge sentenced him to life in prison. Frash appealed for a new trial, but in September 2019, Florida's First District Court of Appeal upheld the previous court's decision. As a result, he remains a convicted murderer serving a life sentence and still maintains his innocence. Eleven-year-old Luis Gutierrez Jr. was watching TV at home in Hollywood, Florida just before 6 p.m. on Thursday, June 21, 2012, when someone knocked loudly on the door. His dad had gone to pick up dinner and no one else was home, so he didn't go to the door. A few minutes later, a window at the back of the house smashed. Luis grabbed the family dog, scrambled under his bed, and called his dad, who told him to call 911. 911, where is the emergency? For the emergency, it's on the street. Where? For the emergency, it's on the street. Is there an apartment number? 
Are you inside the house? Yes. Are you alone inside the house? No. How old are you? Eleven. What room are you in? Mm-hmm. Where? My room. In your bedroom? Mm-hmm. Is the person inside the house? Yes. Yes. What does he look like? Huh? What does he look like? I don't know. I'm not home. You can see you don't know if he's a white male or a black male? No. Okay, and you don't know what he looks like. How do you know he's inside the house? I don't know he's in the house. What? He's in the house. How do you know he's in the house if you can't see him? How if you can't see him? I hear him. You hear him? They call me. Where are they? Um, in the back. Where? Thane, where are your parents? In the gas station. In the gas station? Okay. Okay. And I just heard somebody. What are you doing? What's all that noise in the background? I'm trying to hide. Were you moving furniture? Were you moving furniture? Yeah. What? What are you doing? I'm in my bedroom. Okay. You're still in your bedroom? Mm-hmm. Hold on a second. Yeah. He said he hears them. That's what he said. I don't know if it's real or not. No. No way. Well, he said someone. Basically. Yes. Did you hear the person talking or anything? Yes. You heard him talking? What mm-hmm. What was the person saying? I don't know. He's in my parents' room. He's in your parents' room? Do you know how he got into the house? He broke the glass. From which window? In the kitchen. Do you call me? Can you go into your closet and hide in your closet? It's two people. It's two people. It's two people? Yeah, I can. Are they... What kind of voices do you hear? Do you hear two men, a man and a woman? Mm-hmm. Two men? Mm-hmm. Do you, can you tell me what they're saying? I don't know. They... Men. What? I don't know. I can't hear anymore. Do you know what side of the house they're on? No. The north, the south, the east, or the west, or anything like that? North. North? Okay. Um, if you're looking at the house, are they on the right or the left side of the house? On the left side. Left side. It's a yellow house. It's yeah. what? A yellow house. Yeah. What? Okay, he said if you're looking at the house, it's the left side. In your closet? No. Side of the house your bedroom is in? The looking at your house. Is your bedroom on the right or the left? Switch? No. What did they yell? I don't know. I'm in my room. I'm under my bed. Are the cops in yet? You gotta be quiet, okay? Talk very softly, okay? Okay. Yeah? Hello? Hello? He's under the bed. What? If I'm looking at your house, what side is the bedroom? Where is the bedroom? In the back? On the left. On the left side. On the left, in the back, or in the front? In the front. In the front? Mm-hmm. Okay, side of the house. Is it caught here? They're outside. I want you to stay on the phone, okay? You okay. want to go through the window? Hello? The father said it's on the east side. Yeah, I hear them knocking. You hear the officers knocking on your window? Go to the window. 
She's going to the window. You see them? You see the officers? Can I come out my bed? Under my bed? Yes, come out from underneath your bed and go to the officers at your bedroom window. Can you see them? I'm coming out. Okay, you see the office? Um, coming out from under the bed. Um, tell them to go to the next window. He said, tell them to go to the next window. No, his bed is one window. Do you see them now? No, yet. Doesn't see them yet. If you have a laptop on top of the what did you say? Um, I, I, I'm gonna go. He, he's in my sister's room, but I'm gonna go to that one. Who's in your sister's room? The guy in the house? No, the the officer. Yeah, he's in the he's come next window. He's in the next window. window. He's in his sister's. <laughs> the officer is in his sister's room. Yeah, he's uh, gotta come over more. Go to the officer at the window. Okay. Are you with the officer? Yeah. Unfortunately, the operator first thought the call was a hoax, but the panic in the child's voice when he insisted it was as real as it gets. Police were then dispatched to the family home on Johnson Street. A neighbor saw someone run out the back of the house before another neighbor saw the police arrive. The terrified but brave boy was soon pulled to safety out the bedroom window. With guns raised and at least one officer carrying a shield, police entered the property. Two robbers were caught and arrested at the residence. Later on, a K-9 unit helped track down the third robber who had fled. When he was captured, he had jewelry stolen from the home in his possession. All three suspects were arrested and charged with burglary of an occupied house, grand theft, and possession of burglary tools. Because they were all 17, their names weren't released to the media. Luis Sr. returned to find his home ransacked, but much more importantly, his son unharmed. Of course, being home alone while three strangers break in would be traumatizing for someone of any age, so it's no surprise that Luis Jr. didn't want to sleep in the house that night. Another blow to the straight-A student was that the burglars ripped his school awards apart. He's a brave man, his father told CBS4. He did an excellent job. As Cindy Bulk stood by her husband as he taught her to shoot a 38 caliber handgun, she never imagined she would use it to shoot anything other than the target. But on May 6, 2014, that all changed. Her husband had passed away just four months earlier, and Cindy was home alone in the house that held so many of their happy memories. She noticed a young man look through the front door and then try to open it. As the stranger walked around the house checking for a way in, the 47-year-old widow went into panic mode. She grabbed her gun, hid in the bathroom, and called 911. Hello, 911? Can you please help me? Someone's trying to get my help. What, what are they doing? <laughs> they tied my front door and my front door, and now they're trying to break in my back door. Okay, stay in line with me. I've already got off the start. Do not hang up, okay? All right, I have a gun in my hand. I'm terrified. Okay. I've got officers already on the way. I'm going to keep you on the phone until the officers get there, okay? You said the okay. Thing, they're trying the back gate now? I think they're in the back now. Okay, so first the front Somebody's door. in the back and on my porch. Someone's on your porch? Please hurry, please. Okay, ma'am, they're coming out there as fast as they can. Can you see anybody? I'm, oh, not, no. I'm, I'm not asking you to look, but, it, but did you see anyone? Like, are there any open No, windows? somebody's banging on my Arcadia door. Okay, are you expecting anybody? No. Okay. There's no vehicles out front of my driveway. There's no somebody walking around my backboard. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm going to keep you on the phone until the officers get there. Okay, do not hang up. We have had a lot of officers oh, coming out there. It just broke in. It, 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 just, it, it just broke? Yeah, it broke my arcade door. Okay, yeah, I've got them coming out there. They're coming out as fast as they can. Have you heard any voices? No, they're coming in right now, though. Okay, tell me if you see them. Tell me what they look like, how many of them are, whether they're men, women. I just saw one. Just saw one? Okay, did, did you see a person, or did you see, like, the shadow of a person? I see green hoodie. They're coming in right now, please, please, please. Yeah, they're, they're coming out as fast as they can. I promise you, they're, they're coming out there as fast as they can. I've had a lot of officers responding. And I'm, as, as everything you're telling me, I'm typing, and the, the dispatcher's giving it to them immediately. They're getting all this information. They're breaking out my window. Are you, are you in your bedroom, or? I'm in my bathroom. <laughs> 
you know, they're coming out as fast as they can. I've got a lot of officers responding. Is there an alley behind your house? Yeah. You're back up to the canal, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you, you don't you don't need to answer anything. I'm going to stand the line with you, okay? Yeah. Yeah. What happened? What did you do? I shot him. You shot him? Yeah. Oh. oh my god. Okay, I've got them I've got everybody coming out for help, okay? Please hurry. Don't get up, I'll shoot the again. Okay, where did you shoot him? Ma'am, where where did you shoot him at? In my house, he's in my bathroom. No, no, where, 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 where in his body? Hallway. Where in his body did you shoot him? What? Where in his body? He's laying half in my bathroom and half in the hallway. Where in the hall? In the body? No, no, yeah, like, did you hit him? I don't know. Okay. Okay, do you recognize him? Is he somebody? No, you know? I don't okay. recognize him. Okay, so he came into the bathroom where you were? I'm in the front bathroom. Okay. I said don't move. What is he saying? So he thought the house was abandoned. Abandoned house with a car and locked gates and yeah. He should be sorry. You knocked, you banged, you tried to get him doors. I heard you out there. Because why should I unlock the door? And you're rattling and beating on everything and trying to climb my fence. I'm not even gonna cost you. Yeah, there, there's no need to. The officers give me there a few. I've got, got just about every officer on that part of town is responding out there, okay? Please get are, somebody here. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're coming out as fast as they can. Are you hurt at all? Oh, I don't know. My face is bleeding. I'm bleeding from some places. I don't know. Where else. I don't know. He was beat on me. He was, he was hitting you? He was beating on me okay. when he found out I was in here. That's why I dropped the phone and I almost dropped the gun. I ended up shooting. Okay. Okay, yeah, I've, I've got them all coming out as fast as they can. I've, I've, they're they're arriving in the area now, okay? Yeah. When 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 you hear them at the door, I'm I'm gonna you're gonna have to. Um, I'm not gonna walk up the top of the no, stairs. No, no, no. I'm I'm not gonna want you to leave the bathroom. Yeah, I'm gonna have them come to you, but you're gonna need to put the gun down, not near I you. I will. Okay, okay. I'm here. I'm going to wait till you see the officers before I disconnect, okay? Yeah, I'm showing they are there. They should be coming inside. Oh, okay. Okay. Come on back. I put the gun down. Okay, I'm going to let you go now. Okay? Okay. All right, bye-bye. The intruder was allegedly high on meth. A history of schizophrenia was mentioned during the trial and had been homeless since his mother threw him out. He jumped over a wall and used a garden tool to break through the sliding glass door. Once inside, the man made his way through the widow's phoenix home and quickly found Cindy in the bathroom. The brave homeowner was beaten with the garden tool and punched repeatedly. The intruder hit her head on the towel rail and bent her backward over the bathtub. That's when she managed to fire. Although she didn't know it at the time, she had shot the burglar in the stomach. Despite feeling some guilt for shooting a human being, there was no doubt that he would have killed her if she hadn't. He had knocked her tooth out, and her eyes were swollen from his blows, and there was a large cut across her face. 21-year-old Michael Lewis, the man who very nearly took her life, was a few years younger than Bulk's son. Police escorted him to the hospital, where he stayed for a month. Following a traumatic ordeal, Bulk was in the ICU for three days and in hospital for over a week. She was left in a wheelchair, which she would need for the next year, along with suffering from chronic pain. The victim was unable to work after the incident, and having experienced such terror, the widow also had to cope with PTSD. When Lewis was released, he was charged with second-degree burglary and aggravated assault. In September, he pleaded guilty to both charges as part of a plea agreement and was sentenced to a year in prison and four years probation. The criminal was also ordered to pay monthly restitution, which he did but stopped paying before he finished paying just $458 for breaking the door. After ongoing treatment to overcome her PTSD, Bulk now wants anyone who's been through trauma to know that they can get through it. 
She told azfamily.com, if I could help just one person by what I went through, I would say, get help. Don't wait until it's too late. Get help. A New Year's Eve celebration ends with a bizarre and deadly ending. 24-year-old Jarrell Shavanta Lee celebrated New Year's Eve 2012 with family and friends just across the street from his home in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Shortly after midnight, Lee left the party and began walking home when he saw two men, Quentin Epps and Lee's cousin, Jamil Walker, standing beside a blue car amid a heated argument. After Epps left the scene in the blue car, Lee continued on his way home with Walker. 20 minutes later, the two stood outside Lee's home when they saw a black Cadillac approaching. The car stopped and Epps got out. Continuing the argument from earlier, the dispute escalated quickly and Epps became increasingly aggressive. After a few minutes, Epps got back into the Cadillac and left. About 20 minutes later, a burgundy Mitsubishi Gallant drove up to Lee's home, stopping outside. Fed up with the ongoing dispute, Lee retrieved a loaded 45 caliber handgun from his car and hid it in his pocket, out of sight but ready if needed. Moments later, the Mitsubishi drove off, but it continued to circle the block before stopping outside a cemetery across the street from Lee's home. Epps and several others got out of the car, and Lee and Walker headed to where they were parked. Epps and Walker restarted their argument when they arrived, and the situation quickly turned violent. During the altercation, Epps pulled out a gun and shot Walker twice. Scrambling, Walker stood, attempting to flee. Running away from the scene, Quinton fired at the 23-year-old over and over until Walker dropped dead. With him dead, Epps turned and pointed his gun at Lee. Before he could fire, Lee shot the 21-year-old several times. As the events unfolded, several panicked 911 calls came in. 911. Oh, there's, a, there's a policeman across the street from me, and there's fire shot. Uh, shots fired, and I can't. Uh, okay, I don't know. If he's by himself, and I heard. I saw him draw his gun on the guy in, in the car, and then I came to the back room, and I've heard shots, and he's all by himself. It looked like to me, okay. and I'm afraid to look out there. Okay, one moment. Okay. Oh, please, God, let him be okay. We're getting some help on the way. Do you see anything from where you are safely? I, I, I'm afraid to go look, but no, I'll no, look. that's fine. That's fine. Okay, just a minute. I'm going around the corner. Only if it's only where it's safe for you. I want you to stay in a safe place in your house. Oh, sure. I, I'm, I'm, I just don't want the shots to come over here. I don't know. Sir, I don't see the cop now. He was standing to the side, and I don't know who shot the shot. Oh, my God. Let's see if he's got somebody on the ground. Oh, now he's at, oh, the guy's on the ground. Okay, the guy's on the ground. The police has the, yeah. has the, has the gun on him. Okay. So, but he's, he, but the policeman's all by himself. Okay, yeah, we're getting some help on the way out there to him. And okay. is the guy complying? Uh, yeah, he's, he's laying flat. I think he's hurt. Okay. I think he's been shot. He's laying on his back and his arms are up. And the policeman's just standing over him. Okay. The, the guy's laying, he's got he's got the gun on him still, but he covered him up with something black. Now he put the gun in the holster. I think he sees that the guy's hurt and he's not okay. going to do anything. Okay. Oh, what on earth? He's still very cautious, though, but what I think he's covering him to keep him from going into shock or something. Yeah, we're getting medics on the way out there, too, as well. Okay. I just want to make sure if you see him get up or if anybody else comes around that we know that. No. Okay. There's no. nobody. We have several officers on the way out there to him. You, you're doing okay. great. We appreciate it. I just, I saw the policeman by himself and I was so worried that he couldn't talk and do his business too. So I decided to call. And you were very quick at it too. That helps us get people out there faster. Okay. Well, I figured he probably would call, but then if he's so busy, I didn't know if he had time. He <sighs> did, but I think you might even have beat him, honestly. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, he was very, he definitely was, He's holding his hand on him now. I think he's trying to maybe stop the bleeding or something. I'm not sure. I can't see blood, but I can see that he's... Oh, my goodness. All right. It looks like we are talking to the officer at this point, so it looks like he's okay. All right. Okay. I'll go ahead and let you go, Sherry. We appreciate your help. Okay. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Bye-bye. I'm on hold with 911. 911, what is your emergency? 
Hello, I'm calling from, uh, I've got a police officer next door, um, and he, it looks like he might need some assistance. He looks like he's by himself, and he does have a perpetrator on the ground right now. He is holding a stun gun on him, Mm -hmm. but I'm just concerned that he might need some help. (laughs) Um, It looks like he may have thrown um, a firearm onto the ground, and it looks, (laughs) there is someone in the car there's one person on the ground, and there's one, and there's someone getting out of the car. He's he's commanding him to get out of the car right now. Uh, I don't know, and, and this and the driver is on the phone, is on his cell phone. But just a little concern. I don't want anything to happen to the police officer. <laughs> yeah, I don't want so. To. Okay, so the guy is actually in a car, and then. There are there are two. One is on the ground. He did use his stun gun on the the police officer did use his stun, his stun gun on him. There is another, and there is a driver. He is currently sitting in the vehicle on the phone, um, and the police officer does have his um, stun gun pointed at the other man on the on the ground, but he is by himself. I'm not sure if he was just patrol patrolling and saw something, but okay. Uh, All right, we'll let officers know. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. Police discovered Quinton Epps lying in a pool of blood on the street at 2.25 a.m. He was taken to Centara Norfolk General Hospital but died two hours later. That same day, officers were notified of another body, later identified as Walker, found just a few feet away behind a nearby house. The only survivor, Lee, was arrested and charged with first-degree murder for Epps' death. Lee and his legal team claimed he acted in self-defense, citing the Stand Your Ground law. The trial began on July 6, 2015. Prosecutors detailed how Epps' death was deliberate and premeditated. The jury heard how Lee fled the scene and hid his gun under a bin. Jarrell Lee was convicted of second-degree murder and sentenced to 16 to 20 years. In 2018, his attempt to appeal the verdict was unsuccessful and he remains incarcerated. In March 2021, an 11-year-old child called 911 for help as she and her six-year-old brother were trapped inside a burning Charlotte apartment. The children were at home alone at the time of the incident. The fire is, the house is on fire, help! Please, I have a little brother, please! And what, huh? what? What's the number of the building? I don't know, folks. Well, ah. You've got fire companies coming out to Rose Thorn Place. That's the apartment complex, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so what, please help. Is everybody out of the apartment? No, we're inside of it. Okay, and the apartment is on fire. <laughs> yeah, help! Huh? Help! Okay, we've got fire companies coming out there. Do you know what your phone number is? <laughs> Um, no. We can't see anything. Everything is burning. Are you inside? Yeah, we're inside. You're inside? Where Where are you in the apartment? Huh? Where are you in the apartment? We're in the, my bedroom. Okay, where is the bedroom? bathroom. Where, where is that? Hi. Is it upstairs, downstairs? Huh? It's in the back. In the back, is it down the window? I'm at the window. Is it down? You can see me at the window. You can see me at the window. Oh, it's the same thing there. No, it's the come over here, bunny. Can you can you close the door? Huh? Can you close the door? You can shut down. It's burning. Okay. All right. We've got fire companies coming out there. Can you get to the window? Okay. Everything. How many, how, many, how many people are with you? <laughs> Only two people. Everybody else is gone. It's just ah. you. It's yeah, just me and my brother. Hey. How old are you? <laughs> I'm 11 and my brother is 6. Okay. We've got fire company. Ah. Can you stay on the phone with me? Sorry, hurry, hurry. It's burning. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Are you, okay. Are you injured at all? No, not yet. Okay, is the fire is the fire in the room with you, or is it outside the room? No, it's in a different room, but it's, it's getting closer. Okay, where are your parents? My mom's at work. No one's here with us. Okay, so we fell asleep not knowing. So is it just you two in the room? Yeah. 
Okay. All right. We've got fire company no. coming out there. I need you to stay on the phone with me. Okay. Please hurry up. How old are you? Oh, I'm only 11. You're 7 and 11? Yeah. I hear them coming. Okay, yep, the fire truck's coming. Are you upstairs or downstairs? I'm upstairs. Okay, you're you're upstairs in the back of the apartment? They should see me at the window. Okay. Can I be yelling for help? Yep, we've got fire companies coming out there. I need you to stay on the phone with me. Keep talking to me, okay? Okay, but hurry, please. Yep, they're coming. Oh. Is the fire, has the fire got through the door yet, or are you still safe? Um, we have got to the door, but there's a lot of smoke to pull over. We can't breathe. I okay. just saw them pass by us. All right, yep, they're going. They're they're pulling up. Uh, um, there's smoke in your room? Yeah. Okay. A lot. All right. Help! Are you, are you at the window now? Yeah. Okay. Right here, right here, right here. There's a lot of stuff burning down. No, not right there, buddy. Over here, over here. Ah, yeah. Can you breathe? Help! Help! Help me! Hey, can you put something on your face? Put like a blanket or something over your face. Please, no. Me and my brother's going to let you breathe. Are you talking to the fireman? On the floor? On the floor? Right here, a baby? Right on the floor. We can't. Are you talking to the fireman? I can't. Can you come through the door? Oh, Please, get down, get down. Are the firemen get, talking get to you? I need you to stay right down on the floor by the window. Stay by that window, okay? If you can find a blanket, cover your face with the blanket. Oh, yeah. oh. Are the firemen uh -huh. with you? In less than four minutes, firefighters were on the scene. Authorities said the fire, caused by an unattended item left cooking, broke out just after 6.30 p.m. at the Presley South End Apartments near Barringer Drive, just south of Uptown Charlotte. Medics on the scene evaluated six other individuals, but nobody was taken to the hospital, though some individuals did have minor injuries. Charlotte Fire said the kids had been reunited with their parents or guardians and that the American Red Cross had stepped in to help. Engine 43 earned recognition for their fast action in helping to pull two kids from their burning second-story apartment. Also earning recognition was Fire Communications Dispatcher T.C. Schuler remained calm despite finding himself on the line with a frantic 11-year-old caller. Firefighters credit the little girl for knowing her address, which they say helped responders find her. They say the story is a good reminder for all parents to talk to their kids about emergency plans and how important it is for kids to memorize their addresses. A criminal's plans to rob a bank in Mount Vernon were foiled when a woman who was once a felon helped police track down and apprehend an alleged bank robber in March 2021. 911, what is the address of the emergency? Uh -huh. The CEF bank just got robbed. I am following the guy right now. I'm following the guy. He's in a, um, damn. He's... Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. He's in a, he's in a yellow shirt. He's walking right down Chestnut Street. Okay, which he's CES right bank? The CES, he just took off his yellow shirt. He is now in a, um, he is now in a blue shirt. He just went left. He's right here by the moose. Um, he's right here by the moose. He's right here by the moose. He's taking off his shirt. He's, um, right here behind Little Caesars, in between the moose and Little Caesars. Hurry, hurry, hurry. He's got a gun. He's got a gun. He's got a gun, sir. He's got a gun, sir. 
I hear you. I hear you. He's right here. I'm, I, I got my eyes on him right now. Where's the police at? The CES. Where's the yeah. police? He's right here. He's right here. He's a little Caesar. He's trying to go in the little Caesar. He's trying to go in the little Caesar. He's trying to go in the little Caesar, sir. I hear you. Okay, now he's walking over to KOC. Okay, he's trying to go over to KFC. And you did say he does have a gun? Yes, yes, I see the police. I the front He's right here in this front parking lot. He's right here in this front. He's trying to throw his stuff over into the, uh, he, he tried to throw his stuff right. I'm trying to keep an eye on him. It's the police would come on. Right here, come on, come this way. Jane Doe had once been a bit of a criminal herself, being incarcerated a total of seven times before moving back to her hometown and turning her life around, getting married and having five children. But being on the flip side of this equation before, not as a bank robber, but a criminal mind, she knew something was wrong as soon as the man later identified as Jared L. Shaw walked into the CES credit union where he had gone to make a withdrawal. She noted that he was wearing a hat, something that is not allowed at the bank. Doe reportedly saw the man showing the bank teller his gun, telling her to give him everything. She hastily grabbed her money that she had withdrawn and ran to her car. According to Doe, she had tried to dial 911 when Shaw followed her, carrying his bag of stolen money and attempted to smash her windscreen with his gun. But the window did not break. He made a break for it, but Doe was hot on his trail, following him as he tried to run away. She got a hold of 911 and told him what was happening as she tailed the thief. Shaw had fled to an alley behind Colonial City Moose Lodge. He reportedly began removing his distinctive yellow shirt as well as his hat and mask. She followed him onto High Street where he cut through the KFC parking lot where he withdrew his gun. Doe had gotten out of her car and was following from a distance when police approached the suspect with their weapons drawn and he was apprehended without struggle. Jared L. Shaw, age 39, was booked into Knox County Jail on one count of aggravated robbery. There is no information available to what verdict was reached, but his charge was a first degree felony and when booked into jail, Shaw faced up to 16 and a half years behind bars. When baby Dean was born in Melbourne, Australia, he had a number of serious allergies. On Christmas Day 2010, his parents learned the importance of always carrying an EpiPen. So what's the problem? Tell me exactly what happened. Okay, male or female? Male. And uh, you think allergic reaction? Yeah. Okay. And you're with him right now? Yes. And how old is he? 18 months? 18 months. Okay. Now, is that him I can hear in the background? Pardon? Is that him I can yes. hear in the background? Yes. Okay. And uh, air in through his lungs and it's very deep. Okay. Does he have difficulty breathing or swallowing? Looks like he's having difficulty breathing. Okay. Is he completely awake? Yes. yes but and when did this, hard to breathe. When did this start? About 15 minutes ago. Okay. And is the condition getting worse now? Yes, it is. Do you have any special medications or injections? EpiPen. You have an EpiPen? Have I you used it? it okay. And uh, just bear with me. Where is it at the moment? At home. I'm at my mum's house. Okay. So, look, we've organised the ambulance for him. Yeah. Okay. What is it that he's allergic to? He's allergic to eggs, wheat, nuts, nut, uh, dairy, quite a lot of things. I've just given him some dirt tape, but it doesn't look like he's healthy. And he's sucking a lot of air in through his lungs. Okay, so look, you've got him sitting up at the moment. Yeah, but he's really sort of flopping. Okay, we need him sitting up at the moment, and if you can try and keep his chin away from his chest, because it will help to keep his airway open. Okay. okay. Now, um, you said I'm going to stay on the phone with you until the ambulance gets there. His eyes a little bit. I don't know why. No, that's okay. Listen, while he's breathing, 
okay, and he's still conscious, it's a very, very good sign. What sort of reaction does he usually have to this sort of thing? It's just a bit worse because his air's sort of sucking in. He's coming. How far away down there? They're coming lights and sirens as quickly as they can, ma'am, okay? So we're not holding them up at all, okay? I just need to get the best information possible so they're aware of what's going on when they get there, okay? So and the last time that he had a reaction like this, you're saying this is worse. What are the symptoms like? Like, how are they working? Tom is more airways of finding it, like, he looks more like he's sucking in air. Yeah. Okay. And that's him obviously crying, right? Yeah. Okay. Has he got any, has he got any swelling around his face? Hard to tell. <laughs> swelling on his face. Hard to tell. No, that's okay. He's got a red face, but it's more, his little, uh, neck area is sucking in air. Okay, so he's... Sucking in air, is that through his nose? No, well, through his, through his neck. You know the little okay, so he's, so he's sort of straining every time yeah. he does. Wheezing noises, yep. He's really closing his eyes now. Okay, listen, I need you to try and, uh, like, keep him woken. Yeah. Like, try and, you know, if he does go to close his eyes and he doesn't open them, just talk to him, try and wake him up again. Keep his head up. Yep. Okay, so try and keep him, try and keep him sitting up, okay, or standing up, or if he's in your arms or something, try and keep, like I said, a bit upright and his chin away from his chest. It will help to keep his airway open. Okay, the panic is. The EMS operator expertly got the information she needed and continued to provide life-saving advice while paramedics sped to the scene. The eight-month-old had had allergic reactions before, but allergies can be unpredictable. This time, his allergic reaction was life-threatening and led to anaphylaxis shock. His airways had tightened so much, breathing was almost impossible. On the way to the hospital, the baby's heart rate dropped and he lost consciousness. Dean was administered epinephrine, which saved his life. Thankfully, a tragedy was avoided and the family was able to spend Christmas together. Dean's parents are forever grateful to the medics who saved her son's life. After her family's frightening experience, Katie started campaigning to raise awareness of the seriousness of allergies. She posted the call she made to YouTube to educate other people and parents about the dangers of food allergies and the importance of always having an EpiPen with you, no matter where you are going or how quick you'll be. Allergies are often the butt of the joke, but in reality, they are no laughing matter. Even if a previous allergic reaction was mild, the next one could be deadly. Dean and his family are now experts on allergies and are looking forward to an allergy-free tomorrow. In August 2020, a 17-year-old teenager was paddleboarding when caught in rough waters and separated from his board. Little did he know that keeping his phone in a waterproof pouch in his wetsuit would save his life. Coast Guard Rescue. Oh my god, thank you. I, I'm, I'm like 400 miles, now 400 meters off the coast. Uh, to, um, I don't know where it is, but it's on a flight port fairly. Uh, uh, uh the, the two islands off the coast. Yeah, near so what, there. What's the issue with it? What's the, what's the problem? You want a paddleboard or a kayak or what you're doing at the moment? But I had a paddleboard, but now I'm, I'm drowning. I have a life jacket. No, I stuck it. You have a life jacket? Yeah. I'm really struggling here. Keep calm and rest back and lie on your back as much as you can with your legs wide apart and confuse your The waves are really bad now! Oh. That's, that's fine, you will float over the water. What's your name? Alfie. Your name's Alfie. Is your paddleboard near you at all at the moment? No, not at all. And we've requested a helicopter. Uh, we've also requested the Abbasoft lifeboat as well. All right. Just keep All breathing right. in and out slowly, and just relax, and you will float. Luckily, you're wearing your life jacket, as you said. How old are you, Alfie? Um, 17. You're 17. I'm starting to get very scared. Please, 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 Alfie, don't panic at all. Um, okay. Oh. Just, just don't, don't panic at all, like I said. Just stay on your back, stay calm. Okay. And like I said, you will float. Where are you? Can you hear the helicopter at all? Can you hear? Yes. Can you hear a helicopter there? It. Hello, Alfie. Are you still there? Whoa, 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 whoa! 
Alfie was paddleboarding in some gnarly waves near Puthelli in North Wales, when he was terrifyingly separated from his board and would have been tragically lost at sea. But he was in luck. His waterproof pouch came to the rescue when he could use his phone to call Coast Guard Rescue Services for help. RNLI lifeboats and a helicopter were able to track the young men down about 40 minutes after the call had been made. And Alfie was pulled from the water and immediately flown to the hospital. Upon arrival, and showed hypothermia signs from swallowing seawater and nearly drowning in the cold ocean. However, he was released by medics later the same day and did not suffer long-lasting injuries. The Abersoak Lifeboat Station continues to urge individuals planning on paddleboarding to carry safety equipment, wear the safety leash, and take a form of communication with them on every trip into the sea. They also added that it is essential to get the proper training and not exceed personal capabilities, stressing that someone should always know when you're going paddleboarding and when you plan to return. A couple pulled to the side of a road in Michigan and delivered their premature baby in April 2013. The baby was not breathing, but lucky for this couple, a passing motorist was able to save the infant's life. Nine one one. What is your emergency? Um, I don't. A guy stopped me. I think his wife is is wrong with his wife. He's doing what? Something's wrong with his wife. He doesn't speak very good English. He's Medically wrong. The road. Yeah. Where yet? Uh, on Garfield, right by uh, twenty two mile off to the side of the road. You're on Garfield, just south of twenty two. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of car are you? In? Uh, it's a. Uh, it's a red. Jeep. Red Jeep. It's, she just had the baby. She just had a baby. She just had a baby. Yeah. Just now in the car. Yeah, in the car. Is the baby completely out? Yeah. And there is blood and. Okay. Okay. Everything. Is the baby not is crying? It, is the, the child breathing? Crying. I can't. The baby's not crying. It's not breathing right now. It's not breathing? No, I know, I know. No, no, no. Not that I can tell, no. Okay, you need to try to stimulate the baby's breathing. Rub his back with your fingertips. Rub his back. Rub his back with the fingertips. Is the umbilical cord still attached? Uh, yeah. It is? Try to keep the baby's head supported as you can. Just like this. Just like this. Hold the baby so, so the head is supported too, okay? Hold the baby, hold the baby's head back. Hold him this way. You keep the head supported. We want to keep that neck and head supported. Keep him supported. No. Hold him this way. Hold him out here. There you go. And you just rub his back. With your fingertips. You got any blankets or anything to try to wrap it up? Yeah, he's got a blanket. Okay, okay. Is it, the cord's not around it? No. Is the baby full term? Yes. It is full term? Yeah. Okay. Is the, did the baby start breathing with the back rubs? No, it's still not breathing. It's still not breathing. How's its color? Uh, pale, <laughs> very pale. No. Is the cord, the cord's not wrapped around its neck or anything, is it? No. Oh. Okay. You try to do some CPR on him if he's not breathing. You want me to do CPR? Is any is I'm the baby not breathing at all? Yeah. Not breathing at all. Not breathing at all? No. Okay. Okay, is, it lay, is he laying on his back? Yeah. Okay, we need to make sure that his mouth is open. Yeah. Nothing's blocking the tailway. Is there anything in his hand? Or in his mouth, no. I mean? Okay, we're going to put one hand on his forehead. Is there anything in his mouth? Anything blocking his airway? We need to make sure his mouth and airway aren't blocked. <laughs> <laughs> can you check the vein? Okay, put one hand on his forehead okay. and the fingers of your other hand just under the bony part of his chin. You're going to okay. tilt his head back just a little, but not too much, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Is it, did the baby make any movement or anything? Can you feel if the baby's breathing? No, the baby's not breathing. Okay. 
You're going to need to open his mouth, and you've already checked to see if anything's inside, correct? Yep. Okay. We're gonna. Are you willing to do res, rescue breaths? Yeah, I can do it. Okay, you're going to cover the baby's mouth and nose with your mouth. Okay. And you're just going to put two little puffs of air into his mouth, okay? It's two slow breaths. <laughs> two slow breaths? Yeah, two slow breaths. You should be able to see his chest rise. All right, I did too slow. Okay, did you see his chest move? Yeah. Okay. Is he moving or doing anything now? No, nothing. Nothing? No. Okay, we're going to do some chest compressions, okay? Oh, yes. She is moving? Yeah. The baby's moving? Yep. Is it crying? Is it... Yeah. The baby is crying now? It's, it's like whimpering. It's whimpering, so... Yeah. Can you see if it's breathing? Can you check to see if she's breathing? Let me see. Put your ear down by your mouth if you have to, just to see if you can hear anything. Okay, hold, on. hold on one sec. Okay, well, I'm right now. Yeah, he's breathing. She's breathing? She got her wrapped yep. up? Yep. Okay, and the umbilical cord's still attached, correct? Yes. Okay, because you don't want to cut. <laughs> and the baby's still breathing right now, crying? What's yep, the baby doing? Breathing. Just breathing, whimpering. Just still breathing and whimpering? Okay, you got, you got towels or blankets around her to try to keep the baby warm, too? Yeah, we got a blanket. How's, my, how's mom doing? Are you okay? Is mom doing okay? Yeah, she's okay. She's doing okay. Yeah, she's okay. Okay. She's just worried about the baby. Yeah, no, just keep an eye on that breathing on the baby. Okay. <laughs> Is the umbilical cord pulsating at all? Can you tell? Um, no, I can't tell. Can't tell, okay. I can hear the aerial coming though. Yeah, my partner's got everyone going as soon as we started talking. The baby's still breathing okay? They're crying? Okay. Yeah, the baby's okay. Yeah, still breathing. Baby's still breathing? Okay, cool. Yep. Very good. <laughs> oh, shit, man. You did a good job. <laughs> Mom's still doing okay? Yeah, mom's still okay. Okay. Yeah, I just, I just got the baby to start doing okay. Yeah, Jeff, who's out with you? Okay, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Who's out with you? Um, a couple officers Jeff, and a couple officers. are out there with you? Yeah. All right, very good. They'll take care of them. All right. All right, thank you very much. Good job. All right, thank you. No problem. Bye. Bye. The couple who gave birth to their premature child on the side of a road in a rural area in Macomb County owes their child's life to a passing motorist. The newborn baby's father had managed to flag down the motorist, later identified as 21-year-old Brian Cornelison, to ask him for help. According to Cornelison, the couple did not speak English very well, but were very distressed over their new child's condition. Cornelison contacted 911 and reached dispatcher Stephen Kulik. Kulik gave Cornelison CPR instructions over the phone, and the motorist was able to revive the baby and save her life. Although it was very emotional, Kulik and Cornelison were both able to maintain calm during the call. Cornelison stated in an interview that Kulik's ability to maintain a calm presence and walk him through the steps of CPR despite his school training was imperative to save the infant's life. Ryan Cornelison, who weighed 290 pounds and played football in high school, was instructed to take the baby, who weighed a mere 3 pounds 8 ounces, in his hands and do exactly as Kulik said. The infant was treated by the Macomb Township Fire Department and taken to Henry Ford Macomb Hospital. Since that day, Cornelison kept in touch with the family, who was overwhelmed with thankfulness and gratitude. They loved seeing me, and they were just so thankful, he said. They told me that they wanted me to stay in the baby's life. He told reporters that he had been informed that the baby would be hospitalized for at least a month due to her premature status. I mean, I told numerous people it was very emotional, Cornelison said in an interview. I was scared, nervous, and it was something that I never expected to do in my lifetime. 
Cornelison was studying criminal justice at Macomb County Community College with dreams of becoming a police officer after graduation. In January 2009, two fishermen on the Great Salt Lake capsized their boat, sending them into the cold water. One man dialed 911, and Utah Highway Patrol dispatcher Kathy Jo Hall talked to him for an hour, pinpointing his location and reassuring both men that help was on the way. Hi, Rachel. What's the location of your emergency? Sir? Can I help you? Sir, we have a, a couple of people who've tipped over in the Great Salt Lake. I've got them on the line. Okay. Go ahead and go ahead and let them know where you are, sir. You let them know? No, you, you tell them. They're going to... Where are you? Okay. You're on I-80? So Hello? they're in the Great Salt Lake. They're out on the lake? Out on the lake. Their boat tipped over there near the marina. Salt Air Marina, we tipped over just north of Salt Air Marina. Little northwest. Freezing. Boat tipped over. How many people are in the boat? Just two. What's your name? Jason, sir. Jason? Jason Can you see the marina from where you're at? Huh? Can you see the marina? I can hear you. Can you see the marina? Yeah, I can see the marina. I can see the marina from here. Where what's I your cell phone number? Jason, what's your cell phone number? Jason. Hello? What's your cell phone number? What's your cell phone number? 864 2988. 2988? 864-2988. How many people were on the boat? Just two. Just me and the other guy. How old are you guys? Uh thirty. Are you still in the water or are you are you guys in the water? We are in the water. We're gonna drown here any minute now. We're having waves crash on top of us. You're just north of the marina? Yeah. You guys have life preservers on? A little northwest of the marina. You what? Just a little northwest of the marina. Can you you can see the marina? Yeah, I can see it from here. Are you right by your boat? Yeah, I'm sitting on top of the boat, which is tipped over. You're sitting on other... top of your boat in the water. Yeah, the boat is flipped over on its belly. I'm sitting on the belly of it, and my friend's barely hanging on the front end of it. Right, we're going to get a hold of Parks and Rec, okay? Huh? We're going to try and get a hold of somebody out there at the marina. Okay. Helicopter something really fast. Okay, we're get, I've got my partner working on it from the other line. Do you guys have on life preservers? Huh? Do you guys have on life preservers? No. Nope. We do not. Okay, what's your friend's name? What? What's your friend's name? Aaron. Aaron? Yeah. Okay, we do have one of our Parks and Recreation guys on the line right now. We're trying to tell him where you're at. Okay. Are you, were you duck hunting or what were you doing out there? We were duck hunting, heading back to shore, heading back to the marina. It was getting choppy out here. He says it was getting choppy and they were headed back to shore. You say you were duck hunting? We were duck hunting. Okay, we're getting somebody on the way to help you, okay? Okay. Someone's on the way. You, are you guys floating towards the, the marina or are you floating back out? We're floating back out. We're kind of going well, west. Wind's blowing west, but we're going west. We're like north. Almost still north of the marina, though, but we're still we're getting blown to the west. To the west? Yeah. Okay. But we're still pretty much north of the marina, kind of northwest of it, barely. Okay, hang on just a second. We're still trying to get a hold of more people to get them out there. We're, we're behind Salt Air to the north. Behind the Salt Air and to the north. Salt Air Marina, there's a building. There's a building where all the condoms are. We're just watching that. 
What was that you just said? You you can't feel your knees? Uh, right now I can't. He can't feel his hands. All right, we've got help coming for you guys. Okay. Okay. Yeah, where's the concert at? You what? The concert at South Air Concerts. We're north of that building. You're north of which building? So where they hold where they hold the concert at? Oh, where they held the concert at? We're at about a mile from that building. About a mile out. A mile north of it? You're a mile north of that building or a mile west? Yeah, a mile north of the, where they have the concert, South Air Concerts. Okay. We do have a Parks and Rec guy in his boat headed out to you guys, okay? Okay. One of our officers from out there. Stay on the phone with me. I'm trying. Be on your air, Alex, Leslie. I can't. I've got waves crashing. I can't hear now. You what? Just wait a sec. I can't hear nothing. Okay. We're still coming. Okay. Okay, are you there? We're trying to get the latitude and longitude off your phone. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. All right, we're trying to get your location off your cell phone. We do have our parks guy coming to you. He was running out to his boat to come out there, okay? Okay, I'm a, I can't hear you. The wind's just howling out here. Okay. I think you can howl on him. Okay. How you doing? How am I doing? Yeah. I'm freezing. All right, we're coming. He's okay. in his boat right now. He's on the radio. He's in his boat right now. He's on the radio. You what's that? I was telling my, I was telling my okay. buddy what you just told me. Okay. He's the one that's hurting worse right here. What's right there? He's he's the one worse off, so I'm telling him what we're doing. Okay. Yeah, let him know that he's in his boat, and he's asking us right now on the radio where you're at. North of the salt air valley, north and again. west, they're floating back out. So cold. Okay, we do have the latitude and longitude coordinates off your cell phone. I can't hear you still. I can barely keep right. hearing your voice, but. Okay, we've got. The, just go ahead and listen. I'll tell you, we've got the coordinates off your cell phone. So he's Sorry. gonna. We're on our way out to find you guys, and we'll get an ambulance started to help you out too. Okay. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Hang on just a second. We're he's getting out there. Now we're now we're a little bit west of the building now. You're a little bit west of the building now? Yeah, we keep moving west of the wind. But I bet we're a mile out, three quarters of a mile. From the build from the building. From the shore I'd say we're about I don't know, 500 yards, 1,000 yards, maybe. About a thousand. What was that, about a 1,000 yards? We got to hang on. Yeah, he's almost there. You guys got to hang on. Tell him that. He's, he's almost here. Okay. Here comes some big waves. Okay, hang on tight. Huh? Hang on tight. He's on his way out. I can't. I don't see anybody. I know, it'll take him a while. You might not see him until he's right on top of you, so you got to hang on. All right? I, uh, We're coming. Okay. He's headed out. So you got to hang on because he'll be there. We are trying. Okay. And I guess we've got people coming from the salt air and Tooele sending people. So there's more than one person coming to help you. Two men had been duck hunting on the Great Salt Lake when the wind picked up and capsized their boat, sending the men overboard six to eight inches in the cold water. Luckily, the men had a cell phone to call for help and a GPS that enabled them to tell dispatchers right where they were. One of the men managed to dial 911 and call for help. Kathy Jo Hall, the dispatcher on the call, guided the medical helicopter to find the two. Once Hall knew where to send rescuers, she offered encouragement until help arrived after about an hour. Both men were taken to the University of Utah Medical Center and were likely treated for hypothermia. State Park Ranger Kent Cummings commented on the risks of going out on the lake, saying, Had they not had that, we may still not have known where they are at, or even have known they were out there. So when you are boating, it's important to bring cell phones, let people know where you're going, wear your life jacket, and have a GPS. We got out to them quickly because they had those instruments with them. 
He also advises being wary of the weather when deciding to go out on the water, emphasizing that boating in bad weather is not a good idea. Emergency call operators advise the best thing anyone can do when calling 911 is to remain as calm as possible so they can send the help needed as quickly and efficiently as possible. Nine one one. Um, excuse me. Nine one one. Hi. All right, all right. I'm not in any danger right now, but it's um urgent. These people they came through my door, and uh, my mom is at work, and so is my dad. But they came through my store, and they stole a ton of our stuff, a whole lot of it. They told me to get down. I did. So you're saying that you were just robbed? Yes, I was. Did they have any weapons? Um, I'm not quite sure, but they left now. And um, do you know who they were? No, they um they. Yes. What's your name? I'm uh, 12 years old. You're 12? Yes. You're home by yourself? Yeah, my mom usually just leaves for a little bit to uh, go do a uh, crossing guard duties, but something like, but just. Okay, you know, how'd they get in the house? Um, I think, I'm not quite sure. I just know the door opened. I thought it was my mom. and Was I the door unlocked, hon? No, it wasn't. I know that much. So they came in through a locked door? Yes. And, uh, How many people? Male, female, white, black? Um, there were three black people, and they were males or males or what? There were males. Three yeah, black, three black males, males. What were they in? They were in. Uh, I'm, I didn't see any license plate. I'm sorry, but that's okay. What kind of car, honey? Um, I'm not sure what kind of car, but I know it was like kind of metallic red, and it looked like an older car. Didn't what did they like, get from your house? They took my Wii, my TV, my PS2, like all all the um. They took they like tore down my mom's jewelry, all that kind of stuff. And where were you at when this was happening? Uh, I just walked out of the bathroom. I heard the door open. What did they make you do? They just made me get down on the ground, and I just forty six, forty eight, forty six, sixty one. And just stay on the line with me in a second, hon. Okay, because I'm just really scared. Okay, I'm stay scared. on the line. Okay. Where's your mom at now, hon? Um, uh, she said she'd be right home. Did so, you call her? Yeah, she called like just Where's right after. I mean, uh, they're uh, they're gone now, but I'm just really scared. Okay, I'm just on. Um, huh? Okay, what was that unit? Commerce. Okay, I'm gonna stay online with him. His uh, parents aren't home at this time. My mom's home. My mom is home. Okay, I'll wait till she gets in the house, sweetie. Okay, okay. Mom, I'm coming, I'm coming. Go ahead. I'm coming, Mom. Uh, th th Mom, they put all your drawers and everything. And they took our TV and all that other stuff. I'm sorry. That's all right. Yes, Mom, they were driving a red car. I just couldn't... All right, tell her the officers are on their way, sweetie. Huh? Oh, please, tell us. Uh, he's just what? advising some type of a metallic red what? car. His mother's arriving at the house now. He's talking to her. Oh. It's all right. I'm just... It's you okay. want to talk to my mom? Please, honey. Okay. Okay. Hello, hello. Okay, hon. We have officers on the way, mm -hmm. and we have officers checking the area. Okay. I need to know, was the door locked, or did they break the door in? Um, Honey, was it, did I leave the door unlocked? Did they come right in? They came in. Was the back door must have been unlocked. I just left. She's believing the back door was unlocked and they must have just walked in. The youngster was in the restroom. My my son was saying he's not sure. He said he, was, he thought it was locked, but he can't be sure. I had just left to go to work a half an hour ago and I only I only work like a half Okay, he's hours. not hurt at all though, right? No, he's fine. He's just shaken up. Did they have a gun or anything, honey? He said he didn't see any weapons. All right. Okay, like I said, I've got several units coming, and they're checking the area, too. Okay, what's your first name, honey? Okay, they'll be there shortly. If you could start taking inventory of what they all took. Now, he did say they went through your jewelry. Okay, I, I've already checked and make sure they didn't take my wedding ring, and that really would be the only okay. expensive jewelry that I have. Okay, they'll be there shortly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. That poor kid. In January 2010, a 12-year-old boy was home alone in Warren, Ohio, while his mother ran an errand. The boy came out of the bathroom and was confronted by three burglars, who forced him to lie down while they loaded items from the house into their car. The brave boy took note of a car description when the burglars fled. His mother arrived home while he was on the call. 
the piercing screams of children begging South Carolina Republican lawmaker Chris Corley to just stop rang through to 911 Aiken City Dispatch. Dylan Ott was outside playing when she heard the commotion. Then her baby sister was discovered in the family's pool. Her mom started doing CPR, and Dylan found her mom's phone and called 911. 911, what's the address of the emergency? Our baby fell into the pool, and we're trying to get her back to life. Okay, real quick, what's the address? What? What city are you in? Okay. All right, what's a phone number I can call you back at in case we get disconnected? Well, the baby, she, she was crawling around, and we have a pool in our backyard, and she was, she fell into the pool, and then we didn't know because my mom was doing laundry, and we were outside in her front. Okay. We had no idea what happened. You have no we idea what happened? She fell in the pool. Okay, how old is the we, baby? She just fell in the pool. She's one year old. Okay, I'm going to ask you a couple questions, okay? You're doing a really good job. How old are you? I'm seven. You're seven. What's your name? Dylan Ott. Okay. Okay, Dylan, I've got a couple questions for you. Do you think you can answer them for me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Are you right there with the baby? Um, my mom's with the baby. Your mom is with the baby? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, you're doing so good. You're doing so good, okay? okay. All right, is the, is the baby a boy or a girl? It's a girl. It's a girl, okay. Is the baby awake? Yeah. Dylan? Yeah. Okay, is the baby awake? Um, he's just like laying down. Um, are her, are her eyes We're going to drag her to the emergency. See where I've got going. everybody coming to you, okay? Can you stay there for me? Okay, Mom. I hear the sirens out there, okay? Is the baby awake? Yes. Yeah, no. Okay. Dylan, is the baby breathing? Um, I'm not sure. Is she breathing, Mom? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, good. All right, you're doing so good. Is there somebody there with you? Yes, there's a police. There's a police my, officer. Two other. Yeah. Okay, Dylan, you did such a good job. I'm gonna let you go so the officers can handle it. Okay. Okay. I'll say bye. Despite the frantic voices in the background, Dylan managed to remain calm and answered all of the dispatcher's questions. During the 911 call, she told the dispatcher, "Our baby fell in the pool, and we can't get her back alive." Dylan's mom, Andy Ott, started performing CPR on her baby while Dylan was on the phone with the dispatcher. I just started screaming to Dylan. Dylan, Dylan, dial 911, dial 911. So I got her phone. Andy had learned CPR at a girls' camp as a teenager. Andy said, I remember as I'm doing these chest compressions on Blake, I could hear Dylan talking and she just was so calm. By the time help arrived, baby Blake was breathing again. She was flown to Primary Children's Hospital. They did a few tests and they weren't hopeful for, first of all, her survival. The family was hopeful about baby Blake's survival. When she came out of her sedation, I sang a few songs to her and I started singing Patty Cake. And we got to the part where we say, roll them. And she did it. And it was, it was that moment that we knew that, that she was gonna be all right. Andy expressed how proud she was of her seven-year-old daughter. so hard to think that I put so much pressure on my seven-year-old. <laughs> but she was amazing. Dylan, meanwhile, gave credit to the dispatcher and paramedics for saving her baby sister, calling it a miracle. I'm scared. 911, Bush, I'm running to your car. Go ahead, you're at the JC store. What JC store? JC Penny. JC Plus. You're at JC Plus? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Girl, we're going to Applebee's. I don't know where we're going. I'm scared. We're going into Walmart. Okay, ma'am, you're at the JCPlus. No, we're going into Walmart now. Going into Walmart. What's what's going on? You spoke to a county dispatcher. Where was that? You have to start over and tell me what's going on. This lady got in my car. I don't know who it is. Ma'am, you are JC. I don't know. And what happened? You have to tell me the whole story, honey. Okay, so my mom was at the store, Dollar Tree. Uh, and then. Stop! No! No! Who are you? Who are you screaming at? Driving the car. Did they? Did they kidnap you, or did somebody get in the vehicle? Yes, it's not my mother. I'm just scared. Okay, so somebody just got in your vehicle and took off with you in it. Yes. What kind of vehicle are you in? A Durango. A Durango, and you're going towards Walmart. No, no, not to be driving. It's a female? Yes. Okay. Did they pass? What do you mean, did they pass? You turn it up and use it. Okay, did you pass Walmart? Yes, we passed Walmart. Now we passed the children. Walmart. Okay. Are you talking to someone where they jumped into a vehicle? What color is the Durango? Black. See more units. I have a female. How old are you? I'm 12, almost 13. I have a 12 year old female on 911. She advises that. She was waiting in the car at JC Plus. Someone jumped in the vehicle and has taken no, off. I was waiting in the car. I was waiting in the car at the Dollar Tree. Okay. The vehicle has left. She doesn't know who the driver is at this time. She is still in the vehicle, headed eastbound. They passed Chili. Is she is she refusing to let you out? Yes. Let me she out. is refusing Please. to let the person. The person is refusing to let the twelve-year-old out of the car, and you don't know who she is. She's saying they shot and get her out. Can you please let me out? Black Durango. Hey, do you know who is driving? No. Okay. Tell me what she looks like. Tell, first, tell me your name. My name is Haley Elizabeth Vivera. Where? Yeah, can you dispatch the original call? Haley, spell your last name. V I V E R O S. Okay. What is. What does this person look like? I don't know, but they have um, dirty blonde hair. It's short. Okay, are you in the back seat? Yes. Okay. No, please. One female driver with dirty blonde hair. She says we're going to the police station. Okay, what are you passing? Uh, we're, I think we're on the highway. Okay, but what are you passing? Tell me businesses that you're passing. Um, we're not passing anything. Are you out in the country? I'm trying to, you know. Are you passing any buildings at all? Or are you out in the country? No buildings. Okay, trees. Cornfield. Yes. 
now flying to the open sea. She says she is now just surrounded by trees. The driver said they're going to the police station, but she sees no buildings. Did they turn anywhere once they passed Chili's? Did they turn after you passed Chili's? I don't know. I'm not sure. She's not uh, sure. What is the? Did you go past McDonald's at thirty-one and fifty, or um, Waffle House, or TA? Liar. I don't know. Okay. In order for us to find you, honey, you have to pay attention and you have to. Oh, okay. Tell me. Okay, we're 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 passing Reading Road. Passing Reading Road. Yeah, Thirty-six fourteen. It's going to be a black Durango. She says that they are passing Reading Road at this time. And now Seymour, Seymour, Jonesville, Jonesville, Seymour, Jonesville, Jonesville, yes, was it a sign, Seymour, yes, Seymour, East, Fort White, or, I don't know, East, I mean, all the signs are passed on 31, I first start calling out landmark, okay, do you know if you turn left, when you look out, how many lanes, are there? Um, um, that are that that are going the way we're going. Yes. Is there just one that's oncoming traffic? Forty-two sixty-seven. And one. Thirty-one. Uh, uh, there's one going the uh, way we're going, and then another one going. Okay. Okay. Um, I believe they are northbound on 31. She said there's only two lanes of traffic. Tell me what you see. They are passing uh, sign saying Hampton Inn and Cracker Barrel. Now passing a sign that says Hampton Inn and Cracker Barrel. So I believe they're southbound. On Sandy Creek. Okay, is... Cracker Barrel on your right? Uh, it's north, I'm 31. Haley? It started around 9.30 p.m. on February 19, 2019, in the shopping center's parking lot in Seymour when a woman reported that her vehicle was missing and her 12-year-old daughter, Haley Viveros, was inside. As officers were speaking with the woman, police received a 911 call from Haley. The brave girl stayed on the line with dispatchers and continued to provide landmarks which helped officers track down the vehicle. Officers from the Columbus Police Department and the Sheriff's Office located the car a short time later. Troopers from the Indiana State Police also assisted at the scene. A 28-year-old Seymour woman, Shauna Lucas, who reportedly took the vehicle, was arrested without incident. Deputies said the girl told the suspect she was in the back seat. However, the suspect reportedly told the girl she had to get away from someone who had just killed multiple people. Deputies said the suspect's claim was later determined to be false. Lucas faces charges of theft and criminal confinement. When a family dog fell into icy water, Kathy Metternog jumped in to rescue him, but she wasn't the only hero of the day. Is your mom safe in the canoe? She's still in the canoe, correct? Yes. Okay. Well, the canoe has a hole in it. Your mom needs to come in out of the water, okay? The fire department's yeah. on the way. Tell your mom to come in out of the water. Okay. Mom! Mom! I'm in the canoe and... Okay, honey, you're doing fine. Just tell her that the police said she needs to come back to the shore. The police? You need to come back to the shore! You need to come back to the shore! Good job. Good job. We've got the fire department coming, but we, 
freezing out. We don't want your mom to fall in the water. You know what, honey, the, the police yeah. are there, okay? So you hang up with me and you go talk to those police officers. You did a great job. Okay. When beloved Bailey fell into an icy Illinois lake, Kathy paddled a canoe out to save him. That toppled and left the mother fighting for her own safety as well as the dogs. Eight-year-old Caden came to the rescue, passing on the dispatcher's instructions like a champion. Thanks to the quick-thinking little boy and a wonderful dispatcher, everyone made it out alive. For more True 911 calls, watch this episode next.